Hello everyone, it's me, Captain Blueberry Buckaroo, aka, AKA Lancer737, and today I'm visiting everyone's equestria that I possibly can in one setting. Um, so we left off with uh, Golden Pants, so we're going to go to Peachy Daisy. Here you go. Hello, Peachy Daisy. This place looks great, by the way. Love the use of all the trees that they have going on here in the pathways. This spot right over here. Wait a minute. It's malfunction again. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, we already know what my favorite spot is here. This place is a really nice place. Sorry for messing up. Well, sorry, it's not me that messed up. It's the game. <laughs> That's just great. Um, Peachy Daisy's place is fantastic, by the way. It's just... With this game malfunctioning like this, it's, it's getting super difficult to keep track of where I've been. It doesn't help that, like, the friend codes are not by the actual name, so you, and then, like, there's only so much you can remember from names, which, you know, they reuse the names a lot, unless you customly, customize your name, which isn't common. And then, you know, the pictures are all reused, so it gets difficult. Great. So, um, some MLP news I saw is that apparently today is a Brony Appreciation Day. Which I thought was interesting. I didn't think that would actually be a, a day that, you know, the MLP community would uh, celebrate, per se. Because, well, it seems kind of strange to me. Not in a bad way, but it's like... I, I'm not familiar with any other fandoms where they appreciate just having a fandom. But if, you know, they want to do it, then that's fine with me. That's kind of cool. I mean, don't know what what to do during this kind of celebration. Hopefully they shower us with like, I don't know, pizzas and cookies or something. <laughs> Won't happen, but you know, you can always dream, especially at times like this. Um, and hopefully everyone is safe and they're staying, you know, in safe places during this time with the virus outbreak. And, uh, besides, um, sanitizing and, and um, keeping things in quarantine that you may get from the mail for a good amount of time. Um, it's also a good idea to have a good stockpile of food and water. Um, some people are saying, I don't know, um, it, it can vary between a month, six months, to two years, and four years. In that regard, I, I don't know what to say because I'm, I'm not sure which person to listen to and that it's trying not to scare anyone. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, because of, uh, everything being locked down in a sense, it's not locked, locked down. It's, it's mostly voluntary with some, most States, you know, just saying, please do it. While there are some that have gone a bit too far, um, they're kind of breaking the amendments with the rules that, uh, they're imposing here in the United States. Not 100% sure with other countries, but there's some people saying you should have at least a month, which I do myself. Um, and even then there's... A good thing to do would to be have to ha set up a garden and have a stockpile stockpile of food, mostly dry foods, because if the power goes out, well, then everything requiring refrigeration will um won't last long. You'll have to cook it immediately, and then if you know the power is out, also have the means to make a fire like a barbecue grill would be great. You need a stockpile of of charcoal to last a good while and possibly um kindling wood i mean worst case scenario you might have to use wood in the barbecue grill instead of um charcoal or if it's gas have a big supply of gas stored in a safe place 
again, I'm not trying to scare anyone, but I, I want everyone to be safe as possible. And I'll also have uh, medical supplies on hand just in case. I'm sorry I got into this. It's just the stuff I was reading today. I'm trying to keep this cheery cheerful and stuff. I'm again I'm 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 sorry. Um that's it for both that kind of news and MLP news. I, I can't think of anything else that I've seen. Um seeing people making lots of funny jokes um, between uh, MLP characters on uh, popular social media. Um, saw Princess Luna, you know, Princess Luna, getting into a, a meme war with, uh, I think it was someone with an OC. And I, I don't want to spoil it too much just in case you plan on running into it and stuff. Okay, that's very weird. That should not have happened. Um, more malfunctioning stuff. Yay. Now I'm really, 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 really lost. I <laughs> This is just fantastic. I, I don't know why it's uh, organizing itself like this. It's just malfunctioning more. Okay. Going to go to Joe or not. Prince. Speedy Star. Not a bad name. We get to visit Speedy Star. Here you go, Speedy Star. This place looks new to me. So, so far, it's the friends list is working. And I love all the detail they have going on with it. Starlight and Trixie. Got various different types of uh, rocks and trees scattered throughout the place. And I think it adds a lot of character to it. This section obviously is going to be my favorite one. I just love the mismatch of uh, normal buildings mixed with uh, trees and tree-based buildings and stuff like that. Speedy Star has done an excellent job. Let's see. They activated all the elements, but I did not notice the castle of the two sisters. So I'm assuming they're still trying to finish up uh, the Nightmare on the Moon story arc. Or maybe they have to clear some space to, to put down the castle. Not sure. But anyway, Speedy Star, I wish you good luck and stay safe. Don't tell me the friends list is just going to disappear now. <laughs> That's just what I need. Um, if you are following me with the, the Final Fantasy stuff I play, they just added another um, Final Fantasy VII based campaign within the Destinia game. And on top of that, they added even more characters from Final Fantasy VII with the chance to... Um, win their ultimate weapons at the moment which is very helpful because uh, limit breaks are very powerful and useful in this game makes me wonder how they're gonna implement the ultimate limit breaks though wonder if it's just gonna be something that takes longer to load or maybe it, the game has specific requirements for them to power up so that you can use them or maybe it's something you have instantly you can only use it once at any point in the game I mean, in the match. And then once the match is, you know, you've used it, you have to wait till the match is over before you can use it again. It's interesting. Could be any one of those. Um, I, I honestly can't wait for all that kind of stuff. I have no idea when they'll ever be um, adding ultimate weapons in the final limit breaks. Talked a little bit about it before, but yeah, I just can't wait because that stuff is just awesome. Um, let's see. I haven't seen any new news for Star Wars or Robotech. Um, 
I did for Halo. Oh, there's a big event going on right now for IGN. It's a versus match between all the most popular um, video game characters do exist from all platforms. And I'm happy to say that um, the Master Chief from Halo has made it into the semifinals. And so far, he actually is beating Link from Zelda. Which I'm very shocked to see. Not something I'd ever expect to see, actually. Um, I, I hope he makes it to the end and wins, to be honest with you. But um, those Nintendo characters are going to be very difficult to beat, especially Mario. Um, I've talked about this before, but the reason I think Halo is the greatest first-party series that's serious is because of how the story is written, how the gameplay plays, and the game mechanics work so well. But the character himself is very serious and interesting, and it has a little of a dark element to it, making it more of a, a serious series. And I mean, the whole thing is... I mean, they, they do add some light-hearted humor and stuff to it, to, you know, balance out the feel of it, because um, for the most part, even though the Master Chief is, is specific, specifically winning in the fights that he is in, the war that he is in, he, the human race is losing against uh, the evil Covenant. And, like, when you compare him to Mario, and Mario is a fun character, don't get me wrong, but um, I don't feel like they can really compare... Or I, what I should say is I don't really feel like Mario can uh, level up to the Master Chief because um, though he's saving kingdoms and stuff, it's the the stakes are not the same. In fact, it, his series is extremely lighthearted, so it's hard to hard to feel that urgency and importance in all the fights and have that investment in him because you know. He's not going to die. I mean, if they ever had a game where that happened, I'd be shocked. But, like, um, the Master Chief, the way he's portrayed, he's someone that could die because the series is a pretty serious series. And because of the type of soldier he is, he's a very rare kind. And other characters like him or other soldiers like him, are considered pretty mythical because how how outstanding their capabilities are in this war. Um, and then, like, the, the lesser versions of them, which there's more of, they're considered legendary in themselves. But there's very few of them. Um, so, like, whenever they show up, like that their extreme morale boost to you know humans in the field while to the aliens that are attacking humans um master chief is even he's considered a demon to their religion that's how uh dangerous he is to them but it's like serious stuff like that that makes me feel appreciate halo a lot more because that's more of my thing what i'm looking for especially towards serious series and i'm not necessarily sure mario should even be considered that but i, I would take you know halo over mario not again not to say mario is not fun he is pretty, his games are pretty fun my favorite being the super nes uh mario world game but if you're talking about all mario games not necessarily with mario then my favorite ones are definitely uh, Wario for the Virtual Boy and then um, Wario, it's either Wario World or Land. I think it's World on the GameCube and then the Mario, I mean, sorry, the Wario Land games, especially Wario Land uh, 1 slash Mario Land 3 for the Game Boy. That, that is a really, really fun game. I, I love Wario more and I think his abilities are way cooler than... Um, mario's and his his hats are way cooler too especially like the king emperor dragon i have no idea why this is malfunctioning so much okay we're back to where we left off okay golden pants don't forget to add them their friend code is up above 
they have an interesting use of the terrain and you can tell they've engineered how they want the rocks to be formed it's kind of like what i did with uh the dark crystals in the crystal empire i specifically were only removing them all in one all but one spot so that um all of them would eventually be in the area where i keep uh sombra and all the other dark uh shadow ponies and stuff like that to add more character to their spot a unique character that you're not going to see in other parts of uh, the crystal empire they haven't activated the elements of uh, you know what this place kind of looks familiar i'm thinking maybe it's malfunctioned again Well, don't forget to add Golden Pants. Their friend code is at the top. Great. Well, this place lo looks very nice. I'm sorry, everyone, again. Golden Pants, you did a nice job, and I thank you for your hard work. It, it's doing it again. It's, it's mismatching all the friends on the friends list again. This is it's just making things so much more difficult. I don't know why... The, they can't just fix the friends list in this. But anyway, um, I, f I believe it or not, I feel like the most serious series on Nintendo would have to actually either be a, a tie between uh, Star Fox and uh, Metroid. And I, I think Link to some degree... Yeah I, yeah, I actually do think the Zelda games probably should belong more in that. I It's just Mario, the Mario series, it has a very warm, happy theme for the most part. I mean, yeah, of course, um, the that's not going to count towards villains and stuff, but that's the point because he's fighting evil and stuff. But even then, the, the stakes are not the same. Because if you're not familiar with Halo, um, human race, I'm, this is just going to be very brief. The human race has been uh, expanding in the galaxy. They have faster than light travel. And though they've had problems with rogue elements of humans, they hadn't encountered any aliens up until a certain point when they did. And unfortunately, it went bad because the aliens consider humans in that series. Oh, great. The battery's low. Well, I'm. This is probably gonna have to be my last one. They consider the humans to be an abomination to their religion, so they're like uh, going through all the outer rims of human territory to exterminate humans, and it, it's a very bad losing war because uh, their technology and their ships and their weapons are, are more advanced than most of the things humans have, and then the covenant which is the aliens, is made up of seven different species, and all of them have, all but three of them have the same population numbers as humans, with the other three being dramatically higher, like probably eight or nine times bigger. So they have every single factor against humans, and it's it's pretty crazy. But the when you get to the... Spartans, uh, they weren't actually made for fighting aliens. They were made for fighting the re rebellious groups. And they were meant to be superhuman. And they go into detail of it in, in the lore. And um, if you're familiar with like the X-Men, like Wolverine, uh, all the Spartans have their skeletons altered like Wolverines. And then they have all these genetic and chemical alterations that's done to them so that they can be superhuman. To the point that, like, uh, when Master Chief is in his armor that's in Halo 2 and beyond, he literally is able to flip 66-ton tanks with his um, just one arm. But it's just a fantastic series how um, all the characters are written, how they interact with each, with each other and then other factions. The storytelling itself. Um, the atmosphere and feel and the gameplay is solid. It is very fun and you can you can approach problems from multiple different uh, angles. <laughs> One gameplay style is not the only way you have to play for the most part. Um, 
there are some enemies where that is an exception, like uh, the Prometheans. But this is just such an epic series. I mean, especially when you can take into consideration all the, the stuff that um, the expanded universe adds to it, like all the comics and the movies and the novels and their source books because they have a bunch of really cool source books. And, like, if you compare it to Link, yeah, what Link is going through is important, but it doesn't feel as dire. Because, um, for the most part, they're they're either trying to save a kingdom or a planet. <clears throat> Master Chief is trying to save all the known human planets in the galaxy, which is dwindling because they're being wiped out by the Covenant. And it's not to say that it's his fault, it's just that um, there's too few of them. Like, literally, the type of super soldier Master Chief is, there's, like, around 40 of them, only 40 of them, to have to deal with an alien's army that has, like, um, beyond tens of trillions, beyond probably beyond hundreds of trillions. So it's, like, 40 people versus be that many. And heck, the, the Spartans have been so good at, at combat that they actually have wiped out whole gigantic fleets through uh, brilliant tactical uh, planning. But it's still not exactly enough. Just because of the nature of the threat. Probably weren't expecting me to go on and on about Halo while <laughs> talking about my little... I mean, while playing a My Little Pony game. But uh, they do intersect. I have talked about that before. There is um, a big group of the fandom that loves both Halo and My Little Pony. And they mix it together. And it's pretty cool. Chocolate Knight. Oh boy. Another friend just appeared out of nowhere. Because this game is really badly broken in the friends list. I was just counting the number 70 itself when I went through before. And just through with the number 70, I have around 16 friends just at 70. So this my friends list is completely dramatically loaded, overloaded really. Okay. I have a bad feeling about this. Okay, sweetie cookie. Prince Pants. Dr. Pants. There's a lot of pants here. Okay, this one will probably be the last one of the day. Dr. Pants, and don't forget to add them. Their friend code is at the very right of their name. They almost completely went around um, the center to get to the elements, which I don't blame them. It's, it's pretty condensed, probably because they're very limited to how far out they can build all their structures because it is pretty expensive to get rid of Nightmare Moon's darkness. It looks nice. It's probably my favorite one of the day that is a new one that, that I have gone to. And if I were to pick a place that is my favorite place, it is probably going to have to be what's on the screen right here. For the usual reasons, because I, I love the mismatching of multiple different elements like the rocks and the trees and tree-style buildings and then normal buildings. And then some of the, the fancy um, a, a canterlot-style building. That is a, a, a canterlot-style building because they do have a couple, or used to have a couple of uh, fancy style uh, or fancy characters here that belonged in canterlot. Unfortunately, they're gone too, just like Applejack. Well, never mind, Applejack is back, but the rest of the apples are not, and apple-themed ponies. So that is the last one for today, which I am sorry, I wasn't expecting the battery to kaput on me. We are going to do um, the reading from the black book before I go. Don't forget to add me. My friend code is at the top left-hand corner. 
Okay. April 1st, 2022. Mary of Bethany. Outside of this is written in the New Testament. Little is known about Mary, the sister of Lazarus. She is often confused with Mary Magdalene. It is thought to have been at the foot of the cross, and it is sometimes believed to be the woman who washes Jesus' feet with perfumed oil. The number of women named Mary in the New Testament adds to the confusion. In the 6th century, Pope Gregory the Great said that Mary Magdalene, the woman sinner in Luke 7, 36-50, and Mary of Bethany were all the same person. A statement uh, retreated by uh, Pope Gregory the, the 14th in 1591. Today's theologians no longer believe the two Marys are the same person. The Orthodox Church honors her on June 4th as the righteous Mary, the sister of Lazarus. Legend says that after the martyrdom of St. Stephen, Lazarus and his two sisters left Jerusalem and began preaching in other lands. And today is also April Fool's Day. Unfortunately, nothing I said is... <laughs> been a trick um if you knew me in person i would be pranking the heck out of everyone though okay when jesus arrived he found that lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days now bethany was near jerusalem only about two miles away many of, of the jews had come to martha and mary to comfort them about their brother when martha heard that jesus was coming she went to meet him but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. John eleven seventeen through 21 Sometimes I may feel about the Lord as uh, Martha did when Jesus took so long to arrive in Bethany. Thanks for coming, Lord, a little too late. I know you're with me, Lord, but you were... Where were you when I needed you? But Jesus reassures me as he reassured Martha. Look no matter when I seem to get there. I've been with you all that time and I can pull life out of anything. I can do that with your sins. Things that are your fault. I can do that with tragedy. I will do that with the crucifixion. I can do that when things happen because of the sins and failings of others. That is the lesson of Lazarus' rising. If I can believe that Jesus brought Lazarus back to life, it makes all the difference. I never need lose hope. With faith in Jesus, I can respond to situations, even in sin and violence, his way, and know that he can pull life out of it. It's a powerful belief. As we approach Easter... If I can catch the spirit of this gospel and believe that Jesus can bring life from death, my whole life will be changed. And that is the reading from the Little Black Book. I want you all to stay safe and to pray to Jesus for guidance and help and to save everyone. Um, if you don't believe, I, I hope this message still at least brings you truth and happiness in some capacity. I just hope everyone has a good day. Take it easy.